Welcome to part one of my guide to help you collect everything interesting in the Land of Shadows. I finally beat Shadow of the Erd Tree and collected every weapon, spell, and armor in the DLC. Now I want to help you do the same. I'm sure you know you need to defeat Radon and Moog and how to access the DLC, so I'm going to skip that part for now. If you have played the DLC for any amount of time, you know Land of Shadows is absolutely huge and has so much to explore. So this will be a multi-part series and I'm not perfect, so if I miss anything important in these videos, let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to make a follow-up. I will be basing this guide on the progression order suggested by Fexor Life. Part 1 will be covering areas 1 and 2. You can realistically do these in any order, but I suggest at least collecting all the Shadow Blessings before fighting any bosses. Let's go ahead and start by grabbing the map marked by the little pillar, so it'll be easier to navigate throughout the rest of the video. The first thing that we're going to do is grab the Sights of Grey so that we can fast travel. This way you can also pause and explore and then meet me back at the sites when you're done. There are two along the main route going north of the map fragment, let's grab both of those. At the second side of grace named the Three Path Cross, be sure to talk to the NPC before continuing forward. This location is also your first scattered tree fragment and you can use that at the side of grace to upgrade your blessings. The NPC here will also give you a cross map, which will show you roughly where the golden crosses are and you can use these crosses as map markers to progress the main storyline. Now, heading west following the route, we will find another cross, side of grace, and Skadu tree fragment, as well as two more NPCs. Same as before, be sure to exhaust their dialogue if you care about NPC quest lines. The other one also acts as a merchant, so be sure to buy anything you need from him. There are multiple points of progression that will lock you out of quest lines, so I want to make sure that you don't miss any while following these guides. From the side of grace, we'll backtrack a little bit and follow a trail up the mountain that will take you to the second area indicated on the Fextra Life Guide. Alright, now that we have unlocked several sites of grace, let's head back to the Graveside Plain side of grace and pick up our blessing materials. Looking east, there's the cliffside. On the lower portion is the Church of Consolation. Inside is the Black Knight guarding your next Skadu Tree fragment. You can defeat him to acquire his shield or just turn past him. As a bonus, in a little cave just outside the dungeon is a Blessing America item, which is a single time full heal item. I believe there's only like three in the game, but I could be wrong. Still use as a last resort. Now on the upper side of the cliff, we will find our first revered Spirit Ash, which works up to level Torrent and whichever summon you're currently using. Further north, in roughly this location, will be a group of shadow enemies. One of them is holding a sparkling pot over his head. Defeat him to acquire a scattered tree fragment. You can grab it and run, but the enemies here will not take kindly to you killing the friend. I died once attempting this. Even further to the north, past the Three Cross Path, is the abandoned alien village. On the eastern side of the village is another of your spirit ash. Teleporting back to the cliff road terminus in area 2, there's a Skadu Tree Fragment roughly over here on the western side, and a Revered Spirit Ash roughly here by the pond. The Skadu Tree Fragment is in another sparkling pot. Same as before, kill him and grab the loot. Once you retrieve your reward, head to the west. The Spirit Ash is past the pond with the dogs. Those are all the blessings in areas 1 and 2. Go ahead and rest it aside of grace and apply them. Now, let's get started with the real fun. In the forest to the southeast of the gravesite Plainside of Grace, you will find Loger the Beast Claw roaming around. He can be a bit hard to notice, but he's there. And it might just be me, but he looks an awful lot like Wolverine, Logan, Loger. I feel like they definitely did something there. But once he is defeated, you will receive the Beast Claw weapon, which is a brand new type of weapon, the Beast Claws. Not super creative naming, but it gets a point across. This weapon is a lot of fun, it's just a better claw weapon in my opinion, so have fun trying them out. Next, let's head to the Scorched Runes. There's nothing super exciting here, but we can find a hefty cracked pot for new crafting, and the Blade of Mercy Talisman, which raises attack power after each critical hit. Starting at the Scorched Runes side of Grace, head directly south through the runes, and you will find the hefty cracked pot on a body on the ledge. These will be useful against some of the later walking furnaces, so they're worth getting a couple of millies. From here, jump across to the roof of the house and then jump again across to the next structure. After that, just follow the path forward up the stairs and across the tarp. The talisman will be in a chest through the doors on the left hand side. Almost directly to the west of here, you can find the western mausoleum. These act similar to the Evergels in the land between. Use all of your buffs before entering and no summons allowed. Inside, you will find the Knight of the Solitary Jail and he will skill check you. His attacks are pretty straightforward, I feel like, and if you run straight towards him in a slight arc, you can avoid his crossbow volley for a quick attack. Apparently, he's giving a lot of players some trouble, so just be patient. Once defeated, you will receive the full armor set, as well as the Greatsword of Solitude, 
It is pretty solid armor, and I suggest focusing on armor stats over Elden Bling in the DLC, but that's just me. We're going to take on the Walking Furnace in the middle of the map next. He's pretty hard to miss, so I'm sure you've seen him by now. I do recommend equipping the Flame Drake Talisman to reduce fire damage. Go in with a heavy strike weapon to make staggering it even easier. Once you get the timing down, these guys really aren't that hard. The first one especially really just stomps the ground and shoots fire. If you jump right as the foot is hitting the ground, the flames will go right underneath you, and you can probably just spam jump attacks and avoid 90% of the attack that throws at you. Once you stagger it three times, it'll fall to the ground, find the mask, and you can crit for over half its health. Defeating it will reward you with a deflecting hard tier, which enhances spontaneous guard in mixed physic, and successfully executing a spontaneous guard will also strengthen guard counters. So if you use a shield, this might be worth putting in your physic. Now, if you're a fan of art, we can head to the cliffside to the east in roughly this location to find the Sacred Tower painting. The solution location for this painting is in Area 6 of the Progression Guide, so we'll get to that in a few videos. A little further north, you can find the backhand blade next to a coffin surrounded by Inquisitors. This is another new weapon. If you attempt to two-hand it, you will pull out a second blade, so power stancing at the default. It does have a cool running light attack which keeps you moving forward, so it can be kind of fun to try out. Just a few more overworld items to go, and we will get to another boss. Starting at the Three Paths Cross Side of Grace, head to the northeast to find the Rundown Traveler's Rest, and inside you will find the Greater Potentate Cookbook 2, which allows you to craft the Hefty Furnace Pot. We'll need these for later walking furnaces, so don't skip out on this one. Traveling to the west in roughly this location, you can pick up the Savage Lion Claw Ash of War. This is just a normal Ash of War, but now you can do two flips instead of just one. Now we will actually travel into the Ailing Village. Traveling up the path, you will find the Ailment Talisman in roughly this location. This will raise resistance to an ailment once it has been triggered. This could be helpful for going across the lake a lot, but overall it seems pretty underwhelming. Over the side of the cliff, you can find the Potentate Cookbook number 10, which allows you to craft a heavy fly pot. Again, not super exciting, but feel free to prove me wrong. Next, let's go ahead and move on to something a little bit juicier. In the middle of the lake, you can find your first Grey Katana, a brand new weapon, similar sword style to the normal Katana, just a little bit slower, but hits a little bit harder. And just past it is a Ghost Flame Dragon. It has a similar moveset to the dragons in the land of between, but a few extra twists. This can be a challenging fight. You may want to consider using holy damage and a strike weapon to make the battle a little bit more manageable. Once you have defeated the dragon, you will receive a dragon heart and a somber ancient dragon smithing stone. After defeating the dragon, head to the northwestern corner, past the lake, and roughly this location. You will see a bunch of gray birds hanging out. They are guarding the Greybird armor. Just south of their location, you can find the entrance to the first actual dungeon in the DLC, the Bellarod Jail. We're going to take this dungeon mostly step by step, as there are some parts that are very tricky. In this dungeon, you can find the Greater Helmet, three hefty crackpots, the Greater Potentate's Cookbook 11, and a new spirit summon for beating the boss. I will speed up during the more straightforward sections, but for a standard speed walkthrough, check out my other videos on YouTube. In the room up ahead, you can jump through a hole on the right hand side. Again, just continue forward and take a left out of the exit. The next room has some platforming. Make your way down using the pots with platforms. Try to aim between the chains. If you slide on one, you may very easily fall off. On the fifth jar, turn around and you should see a pot further down. Jump onto that one instead of the one right in front of you. You can now jump onto the ledge to find a chest. After dealing with the mutated prisoner, open the chest to find a hefty crack pot. That's one of three for those of you keeping track at home. Head out the exit straight in front of you and cross a bridge. Several enemies will try to jump you, but you can just run past them. Once you start descending down the stairway, it will break away. From the spot you fall on, go straight forward and veer slightly right. An enemy will attack you, revealing this hole on your left-hand side. Go through it. Now, you should see some jars toppled over. You can jump across these, and you want to look towards the middle path. On the right-hand side, when going through the path, you should see an item on a corpse. This is the Greater Potentate's Cookbook 11. I had to record this a few times, so I used rainbow stones to mark the spot, but this is where the item is. From this location, you can turn around and stick to the right-hand side. You will see some jars that are toppled over again. You can climb on top of those. Using these jars as a platform, jump across to the middle section for your second hefty cracked pot. You may want to get a little bit of running start. It is a little bit of a jump. After grabbing this hefty cracked pot, head back to the right section where you picked up the cookbook and continue forward, walking over the jars. Follow the path forward, sticking close to the wall, and you can climb on some jars to find your third and final hefty cracked pot. From here, you can turn around and drop off the ledge between two hanging pots and follow the trail straight forward. I cannot emphasize enough how many tries this took me to actually record. I had to do it in multiple sections and crop it together, 
So I hope it turned out okay for you all. But yeah, just continue straight through the two jars right here. Go forward and the entrance will be straight in front of you. Let's go ahead and continue. We're going to speed this up a little bit now. Now just run straight ahead and off to the right hand side of this platform, you will see a jar hanging down. Jump onto it and it'll act as a lift to take you up. Platform across to the opposite side. Once you enter the room, you will find an altar and on that altar will be the great jar helmet. Make your way back across the way you came. There is a little switch on the floor you need to step on, and this will raise the platform back up for you to ride back down. Turn to the south, and you should see the boss fog straight ahead after some easy platforming. The boss here is a demi-human swordsman Onze, or Owns, I don't really know how to pronounce it. He does use the Starline Sword Katana. You'll be able to pick this up later in the game, and it is a ton of fun to use. After beating him, you will get the demi-human swordsman Yosh Spear Dashes. Great job completing this dungeon, it certainly wasn't an easy one. Now we're going to make our way to area 2 of the progression chart. Let's warp to the cliff robe terminus, side of grace. South of that, you will find the prospect town. There are two, maybe three things here marked roughly in those locations. The first thing we're going to do is parkour our way up the side and make our way towards the top to get the outer guard heirloom. Do yourself a favor and defeat all the blood fiends on your way to the room. It will make your life a lot easier. Once you do defeat all of them, I think it's a guaranteed drop that one of them will drop their arm. At the very least, this is the third time I've gotten it in this exact same spot. Now make your way carefully down the side and defeat the Blood Fiend at the bottom. I left my footage in here just to give you a rough idea of where I'm going. After you defeat the Blood Fiend, take out your bow, look up, and you should see a hanging pot. Go ahead and shoot it down, and inside you will find the String Seller's Bell Bearing. There are several of these hanging jars. I don't have an exact number right now, but hopefully next time we will. From here, make your way around the edge of the cliff to about this location marked on the map to find a forager. Talk to it to receive the forager brood cookbook. A little further past it, you will see a herd of thunder rams guarding the greater potentate cookbook 5. After you grab this cookbook, make your way up the hill to find the artist shack and the incursion painting. The solution to this painting is in area 1, so feel free to try to find it on your own, but I will be showing you where it is in a few moments. Now, you can make your way down and around the cliff to the Church of Benediction, or you can just jump down like I did. Here, you will find the Blessed Blue Dew Talisman, which slowly recovers FP over time. Then, to the north, hanging over the edge, is the Oath Seeker Knight Armor Set, as well as the Pad of Fist Weapon. Now, to solve the Incursion Painting, we're going to warp to the Three Paths Cross side of Grace. At around this location, you will see a man sitting in a spectral chair. Get close to him, and he will vanish, leaving behind the Serpent Crest Shield. Let me open my map real quick so you can see exactly where I'm standing, as some of these can be a little bit hard to find. This is where I was originally going to stop the video, but as a bonus, we're going to find three larval tiers in these areas to help you respect for future builds. And these can only be found at night. Their locations are found in roughly these three spots I'm marking on the map. They are pretty easy to spot from a distance, as they are in the center of a circle of blue glowing tombstones. You'll see what I mean in a second. These are the only items, or bosses, that strictly appear at night in the Land of Shadows, at least as far as I'm aware, but again, I can be wrong. If you learned something new, or found this video helpful, please leave a like and follow for more. Leave a comment and let me know what you want to see next, so I can put out what you want to see, and not just what I'm thinking everybody wants to see. And as always, good luck, and GG everyone.